Hi, my name is Peter Jordan, and today we're going to be working with a, through some other problem that Chanel has got. Um, that would very likely be something that you have been through um, or know about or have seen. And so let's put it over to Chanel and give us the background and then let's have a look at this thing, Chanel. Hi, everyone. Um, let me tell you a little bit about my background before I start with the, with the tissue issue that I have that I would like to resolve and see what it is. Okay, so I grew up um, as the only child and my mother raised me. Um, and um, my mother was, I was a little rebel. Um, and I was in the trip 2004. Um, I like to escape the home because I didn't want to be controlled or yelled at or um, so I like to just be a friend and I, could, I went out and um, so I was in a long relationship and um, when I was 14 I had been in a relationship for about four years and um, I had when I was 18 when I left the house. I told my mom I don't want to live with a boyfriend who was drinking and that is um, abusing her. And um, my mother also, before that, she, she married someone that um, was abusive as well. And um, that's why I didn't, you know, I didn't want to be around. So I was always in a hostel, I was in school, and on weekends I went to everyone else just to avoid. So I found myself, um, I had a, I had an unbalanced relationship with someone um, for about a year and a half and then a year and a half again. Um, it was unbalanced, why? Because I realized that I was looking for a parent because my father couldn't be there for me. So at that time and states, I was looking for a parent in the relationship and um, things didn't work because um, he was my everything. So the giving and receiving was unbalanced and it was just based on um, a sexual relationship. And I mean, um, that, isn't, that isn't enough and it's unbalanced and it's, it's, it's just not, it just doesn't last and it doesn't. Um, I, was, I, was, I was very um, dependent on this person because I didn't have a father figure so I subconsciously I was I was looking for a father in the relationship. So he was my everything. He was he was my father, my mother, my caretaker. I was I was totally dependent on him, um, and he had full control of me. And uh, he had a drinking problem, and um, it was just yeah. I, I was he was I was my whole life was around him. You know where you go. You have a naughty boy relationship where everything that revolves around this person and you give a lot about yourself and change everything that you can adapt to. So I totally lost myself. Um, it was the worst breakup in my life. And I went to a clinic in my three months. Um, because there I realized and I learned what depression is because I realized I was depressing in my feelings and all that. And then I thought everything was over <laughs> after that, but it wasn't. Um, I met Peter then. But before I met Peter, um, when I broke, before I isolated in this clinic, I, um, I was single and I was living with a friend of mine and her boyfriend. Um, I didn't have a work just as yet. I was floating around, just um, I had my first car. Got a, a loan at the bank and I, um, I paid it all. Um, so I was also all new to my boyfriend being there. So we could go out and he would drive me home. He would tell me, listen, I think we had enough to go home. He, he was my caretaker, he was my everything. I was, I was completely controlled and completely. And here I am breaking up with him and it's like, I don't know myself. I'm like, I don't even know where my favorite drink is. I'm totally lost, totally confused, totally overwhelmed. 
and this is before I went to the clinic and I never knew what um, depression was. I had to learn it by myself. Um, and I'm glad I went all through all of this. But anyway, so there's this one incident that happened. Um, you know when your parents say, don't drink and drive? <laughs> I did it. Um, and I had, I was seeing this guy after breaking up with his long relationship. It was nothing serious. And we went out and we went dancing. And um, a lot of friends warned me about um these people but i didn't care i just kind of went with it i was careless i was like you know what i just want to know my feelings and i just want to go out and i just want to drink and i want to have a good time anyway so we went out and by the time we went home he wanted to drive my car home and i said no this is my car you know wanting the uh, independence because i never had it now that i'm busy having it i'm being I'm being stupid and I said no, I want to drive my car and I um it was it's just past me this evening and I remember I remember driving home and I hit a few payments and I actually landed underneath the truck. Um I only figured that out because somebody told me the next time. So I I I literally went to go park my car under this truck. I can't remember what happened, but the next morning when I woke up it looked like a, a boom fell on my on the car. And I went out because I was on my way home, you know, I, I wanted to get up wherever I was sleeping. I just want to get up and I got home and I got outside and I I realized, damn, what happened to my car? And I went up to this guy, I said, Oh, you stupid, what the hell did you do with my car? And he's like, Oh, you're the one driving you doing your thing like this. And I'm like, oh my goodness. You know, you are so dependent on this relationship you had that you want to fill a, a, a hole in your heart by looking for a, a, a looking for a parent, and that's what you think is a relationship is about, but it's not. Um, but that's why you have all these relationships to, to learn from, right? So, anyway, what what also happened was in my faith that I was. Um, this guy took advantage of me and I passed out and um, I didn't know where I was while my car was outside and I didn't even know what state it was in and I didn't back then realize what I'd done or where I were or whatever. And I, I, I was standing up, I was looking for my belongings and I was looking for the bathroom. And um, on the way to the bathroom, uh, another guy came out and, and, and I know, if, I think I recognized him the previous night. And um, he was asking, what am I doing? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking for the bathroom. Sorry, but I didn't wake you up, you know? And I know this guy is in, in, involved, you know, he, he, has, he, has a, he has a kid, he has, um, he has a girlfriend and I actually know him and he was coming on to me and I was like, this man, I just want to see where the bathroom is, you know, because I can already feel my body somewhere going through something already, you know, just, this other guy that took advantage of me or that I can slightly remember what happened, but I can remember and my, where my body feels. I, I feel that I, I, I've I had sex, you know? And um, so, so this guy, um, you know, being waking up in this confusion and trying to make sense of the previous night and everything and looking for a bathroom so I can make myself decent and then, yes, yeah, so, so this guy didn't quite listen. Uh, when I told him, you know, just just leave me alone, and I was I was screaming, and this other guy was just passed out. He, he didn't he didn't hear me. You know, no one else was in the huge house, and um, so I I just didn't feel uh, strong enough because it's a, a he's older than me and he's stronger than me and um so yeah i um it, it took full advantage of me and i then after it happened i just put, pushed up into the, the the bed and i and i ran to the other guy and, and i woke him up and i didn't want to tell him what's going on because it's like i'm, I'm am i with these, this guy or not uh, should i tell him should i not tell him so i just kept it to myself and 
I said, listen, can I just use my phone because my phone is, um, you know, dead and everything. And uh, I needed to make a phone call. And I actually phoned this ex of mine, which I broke up with. And I told him, please come and fetch me. And um, he, I, I, I just did, I didn't know who else to call. I didn't have anybody else to call. Um, so he asked me what happened, and I had to tell him because now, you know, I've, I've asked him to come and fetch him. And why can't you just, why can't you figure out this by yourself and what happened to your father? Obviously, you want to know what happened. And, um, and it didn't end well. Um, everybody beat each other up, and I went home, and I think I was about 20, 21. So that was, that was one of the situations that I was in. And I kind of feel, you know, disappointed in myself that I wasn't in control about what was happening. Um, and I actually got myself in this, this uh, situation. And um, I actually remembered this event yesterday when I was doing, um, when I was talking to Peter about about feelings and love. And, you know, I made pizza nine years ago <clears throat> after all of this. And um, I met my husband and he changed my life. I mean, I couldn't get a word out when I, when I met Peter. Peter. I was afraid of Peter, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, he taught me a lot of things. I didn't know. What was the relationship about? How is the relationship with different people? What should it be like? Um, and what I'm going through is is normal because I felt out of school, you know, I felt I felt really lost and great and I can't speak my truth sometimes. Um, I have social anxiety, I have ADHD, I have all these things, and you know, for other people it's, it seems so small, but um, it's actually a big thing because you know you're carrying all these things that you need to work through and you carry with you because it kind of controls you and it's and it's not nice. I mean, I'm I'm married, I have kids, I've got a business, and I just want to work on myself to be really good or what I can do. But resolving these things in my conscious mind is no fun, and I'm not even telling you the whole story because I'm actually feeling very excited. Um, anxious as I'm sitting here because sharing this with you and me talking and expressing myself is a really hard thing to do. Um, so yeah, actually don't know where to go from here now. You know? <laughs> okay, well that's great. Gosh, well thank you so much for for that story um, and for what, what, what has happened to you. Um, it's a very sort of tragic kind of thing um, and also it's a uh, you know how it is, is that guys can actually take advantage of of um, of women is is something that I just don't I don't get I don't I don't understand why they do it I don't understand. Um, I, I I I put myself in the situation. You know, in some sense, I feel that it's it's my fault, and I was not in the right my state of mind. I had depression. I just wanted to drink. But I wasn't in the state of mind of defending myself or getting myself out of the situation. I'm not supposed to go home with anybody or, you know. Um, so part of it I feel responsible for. Ah, and that is true. Um, you, are, you were um, re uh, responsible and you are re responsible for, for what, what happened to you. Everybody is. Anything that happens to us is that we are responsible for our part in it, okay? And this, this is very important. Our part in it is our 50%. The other person who is part of this thing, they have got a 50% uh, re, uh, responsibility of things. So, you know, in, in the case of with this guy taking advantage um, of you, um, it is that your 50% was that, well, you know, you were, um, looking for something that you didn't really know what it was that you were looking for, but you were looking for something that you thought was love. Yeah? Yeah. 
okay and uh, and you thought that that um um, that the way that you do it is that, well, you know, I, if I immerse myself into somebody else who's older than me, who looks after me, who does all these things, and then all of that means love. And it wasn't. And that's what you found out. And that's a very important lesson um, for you to, to actually have gone through that and to find out that this and the physical sides of things is not love. This is just a a lust. This is just a you know a kind of sort of physical release kind of kind of thing. Um, and, you know, um, for many guys, it is, is that well, guys think that well, you know, then when in the process of of I want to call it making love, but I can't call it that. I want to call it sex. Okay, that well then they show is that well in this process of sex it is that well there's a love there, you know. Can't you see that it's love? Um and it's not because guys, large to a large extent, are completely shut off also. Okay, and then, so you know, when when the guys sort of see this and see this as a, a opportunity, they almost see it as a way of connecting, a way of love, a way of, of something. Um not understanding and certainly not respecting any kind of of woman. Because if you respect a woman, you don't take advantage of her. You treat her properly until it's a stage that something that both of you want to do. Not take advantage of you because you happen to be um, a little bit inebriated, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You know, that's, that kind of guy is not a guy. That's a... That's a guy who is a bully. The guy that that um, that takes advantage um, of of people like that. It's not. He's not a balanced guy. He's not the kind of guy that it is that you should be involved with or even consider being involved with. Um, anything like that. Um, so yeah, you know, just on behalf of guys, I'd like to apologize to you. So you know, guys should never treat. A woman like that ever okay um, it must always be a consensual thing between both of you because it is something that you want to do not to take advantage or not because he's bigger or stronger or older or whatever it is okay it must be an equal thing so going back to this to this thing is there what is it about this whole event that really um, triggers you? What What is it that makes you sort of upset? What is it? I I realized what as a child you have an empty hole because you didn't have a father and you attract boyfriends afterwards that can't be there for you um, and then you turn it around and think okay well um, a balanced relationship doesn't work if you look for a father in a in a relationship and it's funny enough you can always see it in somebody else's relationship but not your own but Reality hits, and you know you take it and and it is what it is. And um, <clears throat> I understand what lesson I had to learn out of it, and um, I now want to turn that around. And I want to know. How, I'm, I'm starting to learn the real relationship works works like with the giving and receiving need to be balanced. You know, um, the trigger. Um, Is it a sense of shame or is it a sense of um, something else? It doesn't make me feel ashamed. It doesn't, it, it makes me feel angry because I didn't know better. better. And I'm angry that. I didn't have the right direction to the right 
um, example in life to learn from, you know, or an older brother or anybody that knew what I was doing. I had no idea. I never knew I had depression. You know, so I had to get isolated and, and think about all of this. And yeah, when you when you 19, 21, only 25, you you reach your reality, <laughs> and you know kind of where you're going. <clears throat> it's a very difficult age, really difficult age. You don't know where you fit in life. You don't know where you're going. You, and do I swim in front of the people? Do I um, do I swim in front of them? How does it work? Where do I fit in? You know, do you, I've never had that. I can always stand where I felt safe, as in, this is my room, this is our room, this is the room under my, I'm, this is my room because we were always living in the room. And um, I, there wasn't really a long enough time where I could say, this is where I live and this is my room. We always had to live with other people. There was a stage in my life where my mom couldn't take care of me and I was living with other people. So, and plus, my mom and my dad, we were married, so every second weekend, the odd weekend, I went to my dad's house with their kids, you know. So I never had the sense of, of safe. This is this is where I belong. I never had that. It was it, was, it, was, it wasn't there, you know. And I was keeping looking for that in, in a, a relationship as well. Okay, okay. So let's let's put it a little bit into um, perspective for you. If we go back in time to the time before you were born and you were up there and you were looking down at mom and dad and you looked at this whole relationship and everything else and you knew at that time. Why was I choosing this lesson, right? Okay, so the thing is you decided to come into this family with this sex, yes. okay, the sex being the female, okay, hunting, yes. and going through this kind of life, and then also going through the process of being sexually abused, hunting, okay, hunting. So yes. all of that. In the another incident as well. With with the you're talking about the feminine side. Um, should should I go there now? Well, if you want to, um, uh, if it's going to fill in and actually help us to to and help you to to understand, um, you know, the the, the yeah, whole process. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. you know. I was I felt manipulated by Scorpio friend of mine. I was in in grade eight, grade nine, grade eleven. For a very long time, I had a friend that, um, you know, you have a close friend that does everything with you, go to the bathroom with you, go to this teacher with you, do this with you, do homework with you. After school, you get together, you work very hard to be with each other. And um, it started out with a, just a friendship, and then she started to do so much for me. That's attracting the same thing now, aren't you? Going there again. <laughs> that is, um, she invited me for a weekend away with her mother, and uh, we had our own team. Oh, God. Okay, this one I feel ashamed. <laughs> oh. I feel ashamed. Um, we used to use so much substance and get all screwed up and sleep the whole day and she had me away with me. That was also a sick, freaking unbalanced relationship. Yeah. So molested twice, taken advantage a few times. So it's the universe that actually needs to spring the circle of learn the lesson, otherwise I'm gonna keep throwing it at you. So what must I learn? That 
uh, what a relationship should be like, balance, the giving and receiving, standing up for myself. Well, you know, yeah, let's, let's, um, oh, thank you for that story too. Uh, my word, what you have been through is, um, is really um, horrendous, okay? Which is just reinforces the, 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 um, the parts um, that we spoke about many videos ago. And that is that when it is that uh, <clears throat> anybody has been sexually abused, parts of the thing that you put into your energy body is that people only want me for sex. Okay, one thing. And the result of that is, is that you attract then situations like this to you again and again and again. And this is a common theme uh, with those that have been um, sexually abused. And, and I think that the reason that it is that this works this way is because for you to okay. well, say what you want to say you, you, you've never learned with starting with siblings if you have siblings living growing up with siblings they they teach you how to stand up for yourself they teach that you get you you get um teased so you you learn how to physically fight um as in play and you learn to i only learned that with my children today I mean, one is 11, the other one is 6. I can only see what a sibling is like and what it's supposed to be like. I can, I admire their relationship, what they have today, because now I see what you learn from a, from a sibling. You learn how to stand up for yourself when, you know, I, I never had that. Um, and now I'm, I'm married, I have a family, I am trying to have a balanced relationship with everyone. So I've, I've managed to learn from my past to create this because this is all that I want. It's all that I want, because I wasn't a full family. I want to have a family, and that's all I wanted before I met Hitler, Peter, and um, it's actually moved a lot. But anyway. So. Okay, so um, the way I was going is that um, this kind of thing happens again and again, okay? And through it happening again and again, there comes a point when it is that you learn that actually this is not the way to a re relationship. It's not the way to a functional relationship. So, so yeah. that, ha that has its positive sides um, to it. Yes, there is the negative side. So I want to talk a little bit about the negative side of these things. And it is, yes, it is tough for any little girl um, growing up that it is that um, if dad cannot be there for her. You see, the, the cycle is, is that um, for the first seven or eight years of life, mom is the center of the, of the universe. And then for the next seven years of a cycle from seven until 14, it's kind of like there is the whole world out there and there's all sorts of things that we go and explore and we go to want to go to other people's houses and we want to learn to do this and see that and, and experience other kinds of things. Okay, and this is the time when it is that we're going to school and they're teaching us about the world and about the weather and about different countries and, and about all sorts of kinds of things. And so it is that there's this sense of adventure of things that yeah, this world is a big place and let's go and explore it and et cetera, et cetera, other things. And then what happens is that when you get to the age 14, 15, 16, it is now suddenly uh, menstruation occurs, okay? And then suddenly it now, the penny drops is that, well, okay, so this is what it means that I could now you know, become a mother, I could and everything. I've got all the right things in place for me to, to become a mother. And it is as you subconsciously, this is the girls now, subconsciously look for a male to give them the identity of who they are as a female. And that's the dad's role, is to give you that identity of who you are. You look at mom from the subconscious point of view. And okay, that you look at there and you say, okay, so when I'm bigger, how must I be? What must I do? How must I conduct myself, et cetera, et cetera. 
okay and mom can only teach you about being mom but in order for you to get the recognition about who you are as a young girl at 14 year old you look subconsciously to your dad to actually give that to you and your dad will give you the sense of identity and the sense of knowingness of you as a young girl okay um, um on there. And, and that's the role of a dad. And it is the role of a dad is that he becomes important, not only for the girl in, in the house, but also for the boys. That they start to recognize that there's actually this other person that's been floating around in the house for some time. It is that they start to recognize, but gee, I need to have a relationship with dad because who is this person and how does it work and how do you interact with him and how do you know what's going on? With him okay and that dad will then teach you about you talking to you um treating you well um, um protecting you looking after you all of those kinds of things okay that's what naturally happens it's a natural thing that happens in in everybody okay because um, you know, it's a big, it's a big um, a time in your life um, when it is that uh, 12, 13, 14 for the, for the women, they're starting to menstruate, then suddenly they, they start to mature much, much quicker than, than what boys do. Boys go through that kind of sort of recognition that they're moving now from uh, being a child to an early adult. Um, on it, and many many different cultures celebrate this 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 period, okay, of that of that change. And then the next big cele celebration happens at the age twenty one. And at the age twenty one, this is where it is that you get the key to the door. It's actually there's no key and there's no door. It is that this is the time when it is that your soul enters you fully for the first time. Okay, at the age 21. <clears throat> so you didn't have that, okay, one of the things. So it is that you now had to go out and go and seek it everywhere else. And as you were seeking it and seeking the identity of who you are as a woman, guess how it was read? She's actually looking for sex. That's their interpretation of it. Okay, kind of thing. So it is that this is what what happened, and this is what what the guys did, and this is why it is that the guys took advantage of you, not realizing nor understanding what it is that's actually going on with you, and of course not knowing and realizing within themselves is that how they are behaving, okay? Um, that they are not behaving in the appropriate manner. Um, um, so, you know, for them to, to take advantage um, um, of you in the various scenarios that you, that you painted, all of those is because there was a desperation for you to actually find this and for you to get the identity of who Chanel is and how she is and how it is is that somebody can look up to you and honor you and respect you um, and all of those guys. Even though dad sometimes now have to discipline you, but it's part of the discipline in you. It is that you get to see that somebody else cares. Somebody else is actually there. You didn't have any of that. Okay, one thing. Now, looking at all of that and looking at that kind of behavior, that it is, that's what you were doing. And the, and the driver in you was to actually seek that out in you. And it's perfectly natural and it's perfectly normal. You having gone through this process is that you did this because you didn't know and you didn't know any better. You understand? Okay. Yes, you didn't yes. know and you didn't know that 
you did not know. Yes. So if I had to take you back in time, Chanel, take away all the knowledge that you've gained now, and we put you back into that time when it is that you were this 13, 14, 15, 16 year old, what would you have done differently? And the answer can only be you would have done the same, right? I wouldn't want anything different because I'm here to learn what I have to learn. Things happen for a reason. As long as you understand why it happened first. Yeah, but just to answer the question, is that you would have done exactly the same, right? And it's not that you were a bad person or that, that you were anything. It just is that this is what happened to you. Okay. And this was the way that you thought that it is that you had to do it. Okay. So now I want you to look at that little 14-year-old, 15-year-old. 16 year old and all the things that she went through and i want you to look at her almost like an outside figure that you look at her okay well in a way it is what you can do is where you're sitting on the chair you can do this you can stand behind her like this this is the chair behind her with your hands on her and say that i understand now what you did and why you did it and it's okay you didn't know any better if you knew better you would have done things differently but you didn't know any better can you do that Um, put your hands on the shoulders like something. that yeah yeah. Okay. yeah okay and just say to her that yes you now understand the reasons and the things that she did because she just simply didn't know any better. And this was a big yearning in her for her to get this recognition. And on top of it all, she didn't do anything wrong. Okay. I remember all of them. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Understand why you did what you did, and I didn't know any better, and you didn't do anything wrong. Didn't know better, and that's that. And can you forgive her for what she did? Yes, I can. Excellent. And that's all that she wants to know, that you can forgive her for what she did. I'm glad I let that go. <laughs> you see, there's now nothing, there's now nothing to be ashamed of. Okay? Because it is, is that you were just looking for something that it is that you were, you were deprived of 
in your growing up years. You never had it. And if you never had it, and this is what it is that you're looking for, that's what it is that you're looking for. And it's normal and it's right. If you had a permanent dad around, none of this would have happened to you. But you didn't have it. And because you didn't have it, okay, because you didn't have it, you can now let this thing go. Okay, it does not make you a bad person. It just makes you that this is what you were trying to find out for you. That's all. I see that now. Um, actually, just as I was telling the story, I, I, um, I immediately saw the pattern. And I immediately saw the pattern. And I immediately saw the why but now it's it's nice to know and why it happened um to see it for what it is it's um i feel a sense of relief and comfort and uh, okay so let me just tell you what it is is that I did for my girls when it is that they were growing up. When they got to the age 14, I took them off to the shop to go and buy them a set of underwear just for themselves. Can you see the respect? Can you see the honoring that's there? Can you imagine what that did for each one of those girls? in their psyche about being recognized for this. Of course, I teased them. I said, well, you know, when you try on the bra, come out and show me. But, you know. <laughs> okay. That's the kind of respect. That's the kind of honoring that they got. How does that go into their psyche and compare that to what it is that you got. You understand? Okay, yeah. So that is, that is what you were seeking. That is what you were naturally looking for. And it is unfortunate that it is that the guys that you were interacting with didn't know that. They didn't know how to treat a woman properly thanks Peter I see you again. you're welcome my darling thank you so much is there anything else that I can add to this for you or to make it round it off thank you very much I really appreciate this I think everybody watching will say thank you too this is what happens to many people thank you so much Chanel. All right. bye bye